I have a young son I'll call him Jason, with my wife. My sister and I have little to no contact. She's never watched Jason alone, or has ever been in the same room with Jason alone. On weekends we all sleep in. My son usually wakes us up every morning, no later than 11 o'clock a.m. I woke up an hour after that and went to check on Jason, because, again he's never slept in beyond 11 o'clock and he's not in his bed. He's not in the bathroom. He's nowhere to be found. I started freaking out. I looked everywhere. I woke up my wife, who was also panicking. I looked everywhere in the attic, in my office, outside, until I saw a note on the side of the kitchen counter when I was about to call the police for my sister saying, she took Jason. Nothing else. But hey, took Jason, hope you don't mind, and then her name. So let me just break it down. She came into my house, unannounced, and took my child without my permission. I didn't know where she was, where she had taken him or anything, and she hadn't answered. So I called the police. They arrived quickly, and I showed them everything. Long story short, she was at her house with Jason. I got him back the same day she was arrested and bailed out of jail. My son hated it over there. He started crying when I got him. He's extra clingy to my wife and me now. I blocked all contact from her. But my family is angry with me because of this. They hate what I did. My mom says she can't believe she raised me to be so cruel to my sister. And my other sister is saying she deserves an apology, that I need to stop acting like he was taken away. And my dad is saying that it's ridiculous to do something like this to my sister. He said that I should apologize because it was in the heat of the moment, and we should make amends. What was expected of me to do? She took my child, almost sent me to the hospital myself. My sister does not have a key, but my mother does, and my mother is the only one with a copy besides us. So she got the key from her. We've changed the locks after this. So am I the idiot for calling the police on my sister after she took my child without notice, causing distress to everyone? My sister took my child without any warning or authorization whatsoever. Like what is wrong with this family? It's not because she's family that it's less of a traumatic event for the child. Not the idiot. You should press charges and file a restraining order. And in your place, I would also refuse to have anything to do with the family members backing your sister up. At the very least, I wouldn't let them out of my sight with my child. I am horrified that your parents are unable or unwilling to see your sister's wrongdoing here. Someone should be scolded by them, and it isn't you. The police didn't think your sister was innocent. The scariest thing is, you have no idea why she wanted to have this private time with him, was she telling him she's his mommy or other BS? I'm glad you changed all the locks. Put your foot down, OP. Your mom should be on thin ice or even no contact for giving your sister access to you and helping allow this to happen. Your second sister and dad need a strong talking to about boundaries. And if your family members still don't get it, your child is now scarred from this experience. This was extremely traumatic for him. He was inconsolable when you finally got him back. If they give even the slightest care about the mental well-being of your little boy, their grandson, and nephew, they will learn to respect your boundaries and never push them again. Unless they too never want to see your son again. Protect your kids at all costs. Your child's well-being should always come before the hurt feelings of ignorant individuals. File a restraining order against your sister. She broke into your house to commit a felony. There is no excuse for what she did. And if anyone in your family thinks you're overreacting, you should probably limit or cut off contact with them as well. Otherwise, they may enable her again in the future. Install security cameras and add an alarm system to your front door because, let's face it, your family is dysfunctional. It's a terrible situation. My fiancé, Carolyn, and I, both 26, have been together for five years and are best friends. This is the first serious issue we've had to deal with. I have a best friend, Alex. We've been best friends since middle school, and he's like a brother to me. We all attended the same college as Caroline's sister, Andrea, where this whole situation unfolded. I met Caroline through Andrea while at school. One night, campus police showed up at Alex's dorm room. They said he had a complaint filed against him. Long story short, Alex walked Andrea home one night after a party. 
She then reported to the school that he did inappropriate things to her while under the influence. Alex swore up and down that it didn't happen. Nevertheless, he went through a living nightmare for the next few months. He was suspended from all his classes, forced to move out of the dorms, and everyone just assumed he was guilty. I stood by him and we gathered evidence. When the hearing came, I was his main witness. We were able to prove his innocence, but only after Andrea admitted to fabricating the whole story. Alex and I demanded that she be arrested and expelled from school, but the board didn't want to discourage other victims, so they didn't punish her. Alex was not reimbursed for his classes or for having to move off campus. This all happened around the time that Carolyn and I started dating. She was understandably upset with her sister and they didn't speak for the rest of college. Carolyn never forced me to be around her sister knowing I hated her. Well, Carolyn and Andrea's mom died a few years ago, and the girls reconnected over this because they don't have a dad. So just the two girls and their older brother are left now. Whenever Carolyn started bringing Andrea around, I pretended like she wasn't there. I would immediately get up and leave the room. Finally, however, one night I berated her called her trash and said she should just go away forever, if possible. So now to the issue. Carolyn wants Andrea to be a bridesmaid of hers. I'm refusing this because Alex is my best man and is still pretty freaked out from the whole ordeal. He hasn't been able to date because he doesn't trust women. He's been in therapy for it, so he definitely won't be able to go through the whole wedding seeing his abuser. Carolyn is saying that she doesn't have that much family, and her sister, while flawed, is still her sister. And she wants her up there. I said that if she gets her sister, I won't get my best man. Because I'm not going to subject Alex to it. We've tried counseling, but it isn't doing anything. So I said, fine, you can have your sister up there. But since it's your wedding and not ours, then I'll withhold my parents and my support. And you can just pay for the thing yourself. My parents and I are paying for most of the wedding... Without our support, it'll most likely be a courthouse wedding with a backyard reception, which is fine by me. Carolyn says I'm being an idiot. Am I? Not the idiot. If the roles were reversed and your friend had done inappropriate things, I guarantee your fiancé would have put a full stop to it. So why is the situation any different? Andrea made her bed and now she gets to sleep in it. She decided to tell a lie and ruin someone's life. She put Alex through trauma being falsely accused is terrible. It does a number on you. You feel betrayed and your ability to trust is shattered. Clearing your name and building back your sense of self is slow and arduous. False reports make it harder for real victims. I honestly think you guys should probably just break up. And I don't say that lightly. I know that gets thrown around a lot on here, but you consider Alex to be your brother and she has repaired the relationship with her sister. This isn't just about a wedding. She's always going to want her sister around, baby's first birthday, family holidays, trips, whatever. And you'll want Alex for many of those milestones. Aside from that, you hate her sister and are unwilling to accept her apology, which is completely understandable. So I don't know how you guys think this will resolve itself magically. If your fiancé is unwilling to go no contact with her sister, I don't see your relationship surviving long term. So... Save money on the divorce and split up now. Dude, rethink this wedding. Your fiancé shows you that your comfort and feelings are not as important as hers. She is dismissing Alex's trauma and siding with someone who falsely accused him of assault. This goes much deeper than who is paying for the wedding. I am a mom of three teenagers, one girl and two boys, who are all hitting puberty at full force and have started eating like maniacs. Now... We live in a large multi-generational household with their grandparents, aunts, uncles, and a few of their cousins, which is pretty common in our country. I am a stay-at-home mom, so I am the one who cooks for everyone most of the time. And because there are so many of us here, when I cook, I cook a lot. Even so, nothing could have prepared me for the massive increase in my kids' appetites that came with hitting puberty. In the last few months, they have all started eating like horses and going back for seconds, thirds, fourths, and fifths at nearly every meal. My kids have loved food ever since they were little, and I always knew that growth spurts often come with an increase in appetite. 
But this is honestly a tad ridiculous. I never expected it to be this bad. Just yesterday, my kid ate an entire loaf of bread, meant to last us a few days, and feed several other people. The whole loaf! And a few days ago, when I baked two massive pots of pie for the whole family to enjoy at lunch, the boys ate an entire pie all by themselves, while my daughter finished nearly half of the other one. By the time they were done, there was barely anything left for my husband and me to eat, let alone the whole family. And they did it behind everyone's backs while no one else was in the kitchen. And these are just a few examples, but this sort of thing is something they do on a regular, almost daily basis. Today, I sat down with them and let them know that it is inappropriate and disrespectful to always eat so much, to the point of not leaving anything for anyone else in the family. We cannot afford to grocery shop every day because they are always clearing out the fridge. I told them if they still feel hungry after a meal, they can go for seconds once, but only once. After that, they can have more of said meal after everyone else has had their share. We also talked about appropriate portions of other groceries, like bread, and I told them they can have three or four slices a day, but never an entire loaf. I think those are all pretty reasonable rules, even for, for three growing kids who love food. But my husband thinks I am being too strict on them. He says all teenagers go through a massive eating phase at some point, that they are going through some growth spurts, and that I am depriving them of the energy and fuel their bodies need. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. A little consideration goes a long way. There is being hungry and there is being greedy. Two different states? Your kids are. And I'm sorry to say this, but it's incredibly inconsiderate, and they should get a taste of their own medicine. However, the husband calls her an idiot, so it doesn't sound like a consideration issue or being greedy. The OP thinks a loaf of bread should last a 10-person household a few days. Few means three plus days, so everyone should get three-fourths of a slice a day. This sounds like the OP has unrealistic expectations for serving sizes, which bothers me. If your kids are hungry to the point of taking fourths and fifths, your portion sizes are seriously wrong, and you need to cook more food. Add three to four slices of bread per day. When I was a teen, I ate that for a snack. You are the idiot for reducing this to their overeating. They're teenagers and they're eating a normal amount. Limiting that will literally stunt their growth. My younger sister, who is one year younger, has always been my parents' golden child, mostly because she's more intelligent and charismatic than me. I'm fine with that, to be honest. It's just how it's always been, and they don't really make it a secret. As I said, I'm not nearly as academically inclined or much of a prodigy as my sister, but I am good at science. There's a competition that my teacher selected me to go for, where you're tested in chemistry theory. I was pretty excited because this was a big deal to me, and it was the first time I'd ever been good at something. Um, this competition was announced about a month ago, and I told my parents about it. They said they'd come and support me, and... I was pretty happy with how everything was going. Fast forward to yesterday, and my parents didn't show up. I didn't win, by the way. I got third, so I came home and asked them why they didn't show up. And they said that my sister had received an extremely prestigious award a week before. And the award ceremony was yesterday, but they forgot to tell me about it. The award she got was for being head of the year or in the district, and it was tough to get. I got angry and stormed out of the house, and I am currently staying at my friend's place. Now my parents are calling me, but I won't pick up because I'm still mad at them. But I'm starting to feel guilty because, one, I am proud of my sister for getting such a good award. Two, I know that it's infinitely more important than a school-hosted chemistry competition. And it's not like they could do anything at my competition anyways, because I didn't even win. So am I the idiot? I think I'm driving my parents insane, because I'm avoiding them. Not the idiot. You have two parents who could have divided and conquered, but they chose to support one child and not the other. At the very least, they should have told you about the award, and tried to find a way to go to both. But to abandon your event is not cool, so you do need to talk to them. Tell them how much it hurt you, and how it makes you feel. Let them respond, 
Sure, first is always great, but you worked hard and still placed. As an internet stranger old enough to be your grandmother, let me say how proud I am of you for coming in third. Chemistry theory is hard, and coming in third is brilliant, and I hope your teacher is proud of you too. They must think you're good to have nominated you. Yeah, it's super sad that OP is consigning himself to the waste pile because he didn't get first place. No doubt because he's used to being overshadowed and left behind. It's not about winning, it's about trying. Third place is amazing. In reality, his parents dropped the ball hard. They're the only ones here that failed at their task. Selfish and thoughtless. It seems like they've taken the joy out of their son. My husband, 33, is a picky eater, but I know what meals he likes and make sure to cook them all week. Unfortunately, I had to give up a lot of good meals to be able to cook him his favorites and make sure he didn't miss one dinner. However, lately he's been complaining about the meals I cook that are his favorites, only because he's just not in the mood to eat this specific meal. So he would try to get me to cook something else right then and there. If I say no, he would go to bed hungry and without dinner. I feel bad, so I just cook what he wants. I got tired of it because it kept happening. Last night, he came home and saw the two meals I cooked. He looked at them both and said he wasn't in the mood to eat either of them and asked if I could cook him another meal. I was upset. I said, no, this is all I had on the menu. He made a face, acted bummed, and then asked, are you sure? I'd have to go to bed hungry. Wouldn't that make you feel sad? I stayed in my chair, shrugged, and said, as you like, honey. He got upset and told me I had no consideration for him, nor did I care about his feelings if he went to bed hungry after working the whole day. I stayed quiet. Then he stormed away from me. We didn't speak until this morning when he said that my as-you-like attitude was hurtful and dismissive and is now expecting an apology. A couple of points to edit. He is the breadwinner, so household duties are mainly on me. This was the first time he yelled at me, and I was shocked because usually he's a sweet talker and unbelievably quiet. Although I admit that he can use his sweet talking to get me to cave in sometimes. Not the idiot. It's a nightmare getting up every few hours to burp and change him. The dude needs a pacifier. I'm sorry for whatever debilitating condition your husband suffers from that prevents him, a grown-up man, from cooking his dinners. If he can't appreciate those cooked for him, I hope he has a swift and complete recovery. The poor thing must have been born without hands. In all seriousness, OP, how are you attracted to a man on the same emotional level as a toddler? This is revolting. If my husband said this to me in all seriousness with some kind of sad clown face, I don't think I could ever have sex with him again. And OP, remember that just because he isn't raising his voice, it doesn't mean he's speaking sweetly to you. He sounds gross and manipulative, 